Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Remy Sharp and in this episode I'm going to be showing you how to use different debugging tools in the different browsers. So, so far I've already shown you, um, we've always generally used Firebug inside of Firefox, but I'm not showing you how to really use that. Um, equally, you'll be, or I expect you'll be debugging in uh, other browsers like Opera or uh, uh, Chrome or Safari and even IE. So I want to show you those debugging tools as well. So I've got all the browsers here. I'm going to run through um, each of the uh, development tools, how to turn them on, how to get into them, how to um, uh, uh, monitor uh, Ajax requests, for instance, how to debug the DOM, um, how, to, how to run uh, JavaScript. So I'm going to start off with Firefox. So um, the, the starting point is um, creating a new profile. So I've taken you to this uh, this page kb um, dot mozilla dot mozilla mozillaine how do you pronounce that dot org profile manager. Now Firefox is one of the only browsers that you have to install a separate debugger into the actual browser, whereas uh, Chrome and uh, Opera, for instance, have a built-in debugger. Because we have to install Fire uh, Firebug as a um, as an extension to Firefox it can sometimes interfere with other extensions you may have. So maybe you've got like a Twitter client embedded inside of Firefox. Maybe you've got some other tools embedded inside of Firefox. It's best to actually have a profile that's uh, dedicated just to development. So this URL will show you how to do that. So if you're running Windows, um, Linux or OS X like I am, um, you need to follow the directions here. So. Let's just click on uh, Mac OS X. Um, Windows is pretty straightforward. You just run Firefox on the command line um, using this dash P or uh, Profile Manager. And we're going to be running um, uh, Mac OS X. So now this, this part, the applications, Firefox is the name of your, um, uh, your copy of Firefox. So in applications, I have got... Uh, come on, in applications, I've got nothing, no, sorry. So I've got Firefox here, so I've got different copies of Firefox, um, but this is the version I want to uh, start up the, the profile manager dialog box. So I need to run this command, okay, this command from the terminal. So to open a terminal, we need to go to applications, um, Utilities, and then Terminal. And in Windows, uh, to start a uh, terminal, it's just you press the Start key or get up the Start menu, run, and then CMD, and then you need to just uh, uh, run Firefox. So let's just copy and paste this. So I've copied it to my clipboard, paste it straight out, um, and run it. It should complain because Firefox is already, ready, uh, already open. Let me just close this. Right, so I'm going to close Firefox entirely. And now I'm going to run this command. So this is the command I just copy and pasted. And this will bring up the uh, profile manager. So the profile managers look the same uh, between Windows and uh, uh, Mac OS X. I'm going to create a brand new profile. And let's call this development. So this box is checked, don't ask at startup. If we uncheck that box, every time we start Firefox, it'll offer the default uh, profile or the development profile. Default might be my personal browsing, the thing with the Twitter uh, client embedded in there and the other things that I use. Development is the one that just has uh, Firebug and a few specific development tools like, um, I don't know, maybe use Measure It or some Firebug extensions. So I'm gonna uncheck this box so that every time I start Firefox, this appears. So I'm going to start Firefox. Okay, and I it, it's treats it treats the uh, um, the running of Firefox as if it was the first time I, I opened it. So I'm not going to make it my default browser. Um, I don't need to know my rights. And we've got a completely fresh copy of Firebox, uh, Firefox here. So what I want to do um, is install Firebox. So to get that, we do getfirebug.com and hit install, and that will install Firebug um, 
as an extension to Firefox. So I'm just going to pause the video um, as it installs just to save you the pain of watching me. So Firebug is now installed. I got the latest version 1.5.4 and um, the way that you can tell it's installed is down here in the, the bottom corner is the little bug. Now by default it's turned off so when I click on it this is the default view. I get the HTML tab and note how uh, console and script and net are greyed out. This means they're disabled by default. So if we go to the console and then we hit the little drop down Okay, and now we enable it. Our console is now enabled and we can actually run JavaScript in uh, the console. So um, let's just type down here in the corner. I'm going to type alert, hi there. Okay, so that's the console working. Now this setup isn't great yet. I mean, it, it, there's not much to do, but what I'm going to do is uh, come over here and I'm going to hit this up arrow and this will make the, um, the console area bigger. So here I can actually resize it and I've got a multi-line console. So I can actually write some more. Maybe I want to write a, a, te a test function that um, shows an alert box. And I can hit run or I can hit um, Apple or command enter. And I think that's control enter on, a, on Windows and that will run my code for me. So I can actually test a whole uh, bunch of uh, JavaScript and jQuery inside of this dialog box, um, and it will execute all my code for me. And the way that I might um, test a new plugin or a piece of code that I'm writing is I'll actually write it in this box down in the corner and start building up my code, um, and then run it bit by bit and actually see the effects of running that piece of code in uh, Firebug. So, <clears throat> this is the standard setup. Um, I'm going to just take you to a page that I've set up here, demo.com uh, dom.html. So this is just a, a page that's got a bit of a, a bit of a DOM to it. And uh, I believe the default uh, to open Firebug is F12. I know it's on a PC. Yeah, so hitting F12 just turns up my volume. On a PC, F12 is, uh, it opens up Firebug. If you hold down Shift and click on Firebug, oh, not Shift, ah, the uh, the command button, I think Control in, um, in Windows, you get a separate window for Firebug. Maybe you've got two screens, two monitors, you can drag your, um, your debugger onto one window and have Firebug on the other one. So let's put that back down. Uh, how do you do that? You go down here, maybe? No. Nope. There we go. So hit the these buttons here, and it will reconnect uh, with the, the window. So this page has jQuery on it, and we can test that by doing um, jQuery, and we get a function back. And if I go to a window that didn't have jQuery, like Google, and we open up the debugger again, you see we get a, uh, an error. But uh, a really good way of testing for jQuery, uh, sorry, just before I go ahead, is you can use jQuery or you can use dollar, exactly the same thing. A really good way of testing um, whether jQuery is on the page, but also what version is on the page, is using $.fn.jQuery, and that's in lowercase. And then run that, and it gives us a version number you can see down here. If I run that same command in uh, my second window, oh, seems to have uh, stayed, I get an error. Um, so using that one command, and I know what version of jQuery is on the page and that jQuery is on the page, but also it tells me if jQuery is not on the page, it'll also throw an error because dollar is actually valid on uh, prototype. So if I go to prototype.js.org, uh, and open up Firebug. If we ran dollar, you'd see there's actually a function there, but if we do .fn.jQuery, it throws an error. So we know that that uh, tells us that it's definitely jQuery and not some other um, um, library that's sitting on top of the dollar function. Okay, um, so from here I can run my, my jQuery, so I can look for all the anchors on the page. And 
One thing I really like about Firebug um, is the fact that you can, from the console, you can roll over these uh, these different elements that it found and click on them. So if I roll over, you can see um, it's highlighting this jQuery for designers link. And if I click on it, it'll go into the HTML tab, the, the DOM tree, and show me where in, uh, where in the DOM tree that link exists, what the context of that link is. And from this tab, I can now move over to um, uh, these tabs. Now you're probably already familiar with the style, um, the style tab where you can create new styles for that element. You know, you can uh, font, weight, bold. I spend a lot of time in the DOM tab, so this one here. And the nice thing about this is you can scroll up and down and have a look at what are the properties inside of a, a um, the particular element that you've selected. The ones that really interest me inside of the um, the anchors are uh, these ones. So we have hash, host, host name, href, id, and so on. Hash is the uh, is the part of the URL that ends with this. So foo. I think we might have an example down here somewhere. There we go. So yeah, talk. So if I inspect this element, I scroll down again. You can see here, hash is dev. So if I'm doing something like a click handler, I can do this.hash and it will give me hash dev. It's a really nice way of um, using uh, the hash part of a URL as a CSS selector for something else. Anyway, so that's how I use um, jQuery in, in Firebug. There's one really nice extension that I recently found out about, which is called Fire Query. Now this is an extension to Firebug, and it's a jQuery specific extension to Firebug. So I'm going to install this, um, I'm going to save you the pain of watching me again, and we'll come back once I've installed it. So I've now just restarted um, uh, Firefox and I now have the Fire Query extension for Firebug. Now what that means is, let's get rid of this window and go back to our DOM. Uh, navigation page. In fact, let's go to Google. So let's open up Firebug. And you'll notice now, or hopefully you'll notice, there's this new tab, jQueryFy. What that'll do is inject jQuery into the page. I said before, um, Google doesn't have jQuery on the page, but if we do jQueryFy, we've now got the latest version of jQuery. Run that code jQuery.fm.jQuery. Let's try that with a dollar again. Okay, so when um, sometimes on some pages when you inject jQuery, it doesn't always go into the dollar function. Um, so you may have to uh, use jQuery.fm.jQuery. And you can see now, actually, it does have um, jQuery on there, which means let's see if we can do dollar equals jQuery. Yeah, that works. So if I'm just messing around on a page, I might do that if I've just injected jQuery. And now I can run a selector for all the anchors. Now there's another difference here. This, instead of bit looking like a, an array with a square brackets, it's now, now says jQuery uses curly brackets. In um, the console, it's giving me a visual indication that this variable is a, a jQuery element. But what what's more than that is that um, when we inspect the DOM, we can also see where uh, click handlers have been attached or any event handlers. So if I go to this DOM navigation tab, just refresh this. Okay, so I've got a, uh, a JavaScript error in there to show you something else in a minute. Let me just comment that out. Okay, um, now, this tab at the bottom has a click handler in it. So if I just show you the JavaScript code, um, I've got this link. Okay, the idea is get picks, and I've got a click handler. If I go back to Firefox, inspect that link. Now you, you can see here, at the bottom of the page, instead of my normal uh, DOM, ta uh, um, DOM, ta DOM node, I've actually got this events equals object click handle equals function. So let's just go back to that. So 
So this is a really nice thing. We can actually see, visually see in the DOM uh, whether there's any event handlers. And by clicking on um, uh, clicking on the events object, okay, we go into this this object here. I just clicked down, uh, gone to the first click handler. If there are multiple click handlers, there would be more uh, more of these items here. And by rolling my mouse over this function in this uh, just here, I can actually see the code that's been assigned to that click handler. That's useful for getting a quick idea. Uh, of what's been attached. Maybe someone else is working on a project with you. It's a really nice way of seeing um, really quickly what, what code is attached. Now, I can't click in. Um, oh, no, I can click in. Okay, there we go. I can actually click, and it will jump me to that, that specific block of uh, code. Really, really useful if you're working with other people and you maybe don't know what's actually been attached to a particular link. Okay, cool. So that's uh, Firefox. Um, I'm going to show you uh, Safari next. So, if we go back to our demo page, so demo.com dom.html. Okay, so this is our page. Now, um, Safari and Chrome both come, well, and uh, Opera and IE. Anyway, Safari comes with a web, web inspector. By default, it isn't um, accessible. So you need to go to uh, the preferences, and then you select show debug menu bar. And if you look up here, by checking that box, I now get the, de the develop menu item. So if I do develop and then, uh, where is it, show web inspector, it'll open up the web inspector. And this is the same, it's the equivalent to uh, Firebug. Now you can see I've got my DOM tree. Um, and I can roll over uh, individual elements. So let's get it down to the anchor. I can roll over the anchor, and you can see it highlighting that specific element. Um, I've got the properties. It's not as well laid out. Uh, well, it's laid out differently. Um, but I can go down, I can modify the CSS. So um, this is the computer CSS. We want style. And I think we can do, yeah, new style rule, font, oh, crap. Uh, we don't want a new style rule. We actually want to edit this element. Can we do that? Oh, yeah, double click. Uh, font, weight, bold. There you go. So that's how to make, uh, that's how to add extra, extra style attributes. Um, the way that I do it is I can then double click on this and then just at the end, do uh, color is, I don't know, red. And that's a nice way of kind of uh, adding in new styles. Um, I've noticed Chrome can be a little bit buggy. The, the web inspector is exactly the same, or very, very similar. Um, anyway, sorry, I, uh, I, I ramble. Um, and let's go down to that, that element with uh, the hash. So if I want to inspect it, I need to hit this um, this uh, magnifying glass and go up and click on the link. And if I go down to properties, click on the HTML anchor element, scroll down, and from there, I should be able to see your yeah, hash dev. So that's the, the, the DOM tab equivalent uh, to Firebug. So that's pretty straightforward. This is the console. Um, uh, on the version that was, I think, uh, version 4, of Safari, this is version five. Version four of Safari, the console, it didn't have its own tab. You had to go from elements and you could click on this and it's a little bit clunky kind of down there and it eats up room. You want just a dedicated console. So from here, I can now select all the elements. Now the first thing you'll see is this isn't very um, uh, forthgiving. It doesn't tell me what elements we've selected. So I need to click on this object, and jQuery is actually an object, um, but Firebug just goes a little bit step further and kind of exposes them and says, oh, we've got something we can iterate over and show you the elements. So um, in the, uh, the web inspector, it doesn't give me that. It shows me a list of elements, it has a length of nine, um, but I can't roll over it, I can't, if I scroll to the top, we know that that's this jQuery for designers link, but 
nothing really happens. So it'd be really good if we could click on that and actually see it in the uh, the context of the of the DOM, but we can't actually do that. So uh, that's um, the web inspector in Safari. Now I've got no jQuery five function, so if I'm on Google.com and I open up the web inspector, and the shortcut for this is um, uh, Alt Command I, so I can do. Unfortunately, you can't close it. Occasionally, you'll see this little gap here. Um, the way to get rid of that is if you just move the console. So at this point, if I do $.fn.jQuery, there's nothing there. To get jQuery to, to inject, what we need is Carl Swedberg's jQueryify bookmarklet. So let's just click on this. I think that's the latest one. So what we want to do here is this jQueryFi bookmarklet here, we need to drag it up to our um, uh, bookmark shortcuts. So can we, how do we view, show bookmarks bar, right, a lot of rubbish we don't really care about. But if I take this, click and hold down and drag up to the top, I've now got jQueryFi. And if I go to Google again, Open up the web inspector. Just move that again. Do dollar.fn.jQuery doesn't work. Click on the jQuery uh, bookmarklet, and you'll say it says this page has now been jQueryified with 1.4.2, and now we have jQuery on the page. Dot length. There you go. So we can now um, run jQuery on the page. There's no multi-line. Um, uh, um, uh, command line, but you can actually keep writing. Uh, I think no control. If you hit, uh, Alt Enter, will give me a new line. But uh, anyway, so one other tip on uh, the console is you can clear the console by hitting the uh, the this kind of sign no go sign. But you can also do Control L. Oh, no, sorry, Command L. No, you can't, can you? Yes, Command L, Control L. So I'll add that up on the uh, the screen, but Command L is a shortcut for uh, clearing the console. So if there's all this rubbish in here, you can do, uh, sorry, Control L, and it will just clear the previous console. Okay, let's move on. And let's get on to Chrome. So, Chrome here. And there's, uh, by default, there's no way of uh, getting the Web Inspector up, but if we open the preferences, I'm not sure how to open the preferences in uh, Windows, but I'm sure it's something like file preferences. And from there, we want to do show page and tools menus. Let's close that. And from here, we do tools. Um, where is it? Tools, no, not tools, page, developer. Developer tools. I've got a feeling um, the same. Yeah, so the same shortcut in in Safari also opens the same console as uh, uh, as Chrome. So let's refresh that, and exactly the same. We've got the uh, the DOM tree. We've got the console. Um, and so on. There's nice, uh, there's code completion as well inside of uh, the the web inspector. One thing I haven't touched on yet is uh, resource tracking. So this is when you make an AJAX request, and you want to make sure that actual requests are being made. So at the bottom here, I've got this uh, this AJAX uh, link. So when you click on it, it'll show me, it'll make an AJAX request and show me a bunch of pictures. So if I refresh that, and I go to the resource tab, now by default I think this is off. So you have to enable it for the session, enable it for that, that session on that, that domain. Um, you can enable, enable it by default, but it means the browsing experience is just a touch, um, touch slower. Not much, but just a little bit. And from here, when I click on the Get Pictures, if you watch this list of resources, you should see uh, the JSON file, which is this pics.json. 
and you can see these uh, these images. Now, it's my understanding that there are two here. It looks like there's being there's two requests in Chrome, but actually what it's doing is it's first checking whether or not um, the file has changed. Every browser makes a request says, has this file changed? If it hasn't, use one of my cache. Um, and because the cache has already got these files in here, it just checks first. Um, so these are two, uh, these aren't two separate, well, these are, but they're not. Um, <clears throat> uh, these aren't double requests going to your server, so don't worry if you see two there. But the nice thing is um, the JSON. So I can see the headers, which isn't that interesting if, uh, if you're not into headers. But you can see the content. And from here, I can see the actual JSON that was requested, equally with images and so on. Um, so one other thing I wanted to show you, uh, just as um, kind of development process goes, is this piece of JavaScript here. So if I refresh this page, and let's, um, let's put that error back in. Okay, so here be an error. That's inside of the Ajax call. So the code isn't actually run at any point up and isn't run, um, but it's only run when uh, the well, uh, 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 when the link is clicked. So I think that's a reasonable error. Okay, so we get a, a JavaScript error line sixty three. Let's let's um, let's do something else. Let's do um, let's make up an object called Remy and then hide. Okay, this will error. So let's refresh that. Um, because it thinks there's an, it's it's valid JavaScript at this point, but the, the variable doesn't exist. When I click on get pictures, it throws an error. Ah, uh, that's not the right place. I'm trying to force an error basically. Let me refresh this page. Okay, so here we've got an error, and what's happening is um, when I click on the get pictures, let me close the console for a second. Get pictures, it redirects off to that URL. Even though, when I have this click handler, I have return false at the bottom. Now the reason that happens is that because there's an error at this point, it jumps out of the click handler and turns control back to the browser. By doing return false, we're telling the browser that the JavaScript has handled the job that it would normally do, so don't worry about following the link. But because the code never makes it at this point, because it breaks at this point, it never goes back to the browser and says, don't worry about it, I'll do it. So what I do to fix that, especially when you've got like uh, Ajax requests, which may break much further down the line, what you can do is, in the function, pass in the event, okay, and that's a variable that, that gets passed in regardless. You don't have to do anything to get that. And the very first line is default. So you're telling the browser to prevent the default action, which is to follow the link. And that's the very, very first thing that we're doing. Now I can get rid of my return false. We can have our JavaScript error at, at, um, still exist, still in the click handler. But when I refresh the page now, click on the link, the Ajax works. If I open a web inspector, you'll see that there was an error, but it didn't redirect off because we've told the browser that we'll deal with the JavaScript. This means that I can um, debug errors much, much easier because I've I've stayed on a page. If you follow that link, you lose the actual, you lose the error, you lose this thing that's sitting in the console. So that's something I try and tell people to do if they're um, learning and uh, using jQuery as a, a beginner, or um, you're just making quick, you know, changes, and maybe you don't know where the error is. Use prevent default rather than return false. There is a difference between the two. Um, but in most cases, default will do the job just fine and it'll help you uh, debug. Now you can just, once you fix your error and got rid of that that, uh, that break, you can just return false here and you can keep them both or you can get rid of the event default as you please. Okay, so that is Chrome. One more browser to go. Oh, two more browsers to go, sorry. Opera. Okay, so. Opera 10.6 or 60. Um, to bring up the web inspector on uh, the Mac, it's the same keyboard control uh, command, so uh, command alt i. But you can go to tools, advanced, open Dragonfly. So Dragonfly is Opera's development uh, uh, debugging application. If you open it by default, 
because I've got a slightly different uh, screen resolution, Dragonfly is really small down here. And the first thing you'll notice is also, when I roll my mouse around, it's already selecting elements. Um, if I click it, then choose that element, by default, that's what it's doing. So the first thing I want to do is actually uh, get this bar to be a little bit bigger so I can actually see what's going on. And you see that it was hiding some information down here as well. So, what have we got here? We've got the DOM tree, and by default everything is clickable. Um, and when I click on an element, it just uh, it selects it in the DOM tree. Now we can get rid of this by uh, unchecking these two. So highlight, um, highlight by mouse over, so let's get rid of that. And clicking whilst Dragonfly is open, it assumes that you actually want to inspect the DOM. So maybe you don't want to, maybe you just want to be uh, looking at the DOM. Um, whatever you select, it will, will, it will highlight it, but um, yeah. So let's get rid of that. Anyway, so and this is the DOM inspector. Uh, I don't know if you can edit styles in line. Mm, not sure. Um, but more importantly is the uh, the debugger. So the debugger is is kind of tucked away a little bit, or the the command line, the thing that we actually run our JavaScript on. It's in the scripts tab and you have to go to the command line tab so this thing down here and here you'll recognize this prompt so we can do $.fn.jQuery um, press enter undefined variable dollar so let's go to um, demo.com slash uh, HTML. let's try and run that again okay so when I run it again you see the variable is undefined still that's because the way that Dragonfly works is it points Dragonfly at a particular URL. So what I need to do here is if I remember, so I need to go back to the DOM tab and from this welcome, uh, is it there? Update DOM, sorry. Okay, I'm just gonna pause as I find what I'm looking for. Okay, so it would seem I can't find what I'm looking for, so I'm just going to refresh the whole page. Does that do anything? Um, Dom, welcome to Opera. Tell you what, let's just close that. Let's open it again. Ah, it's updated. Okay, for some reason it looks like there might be a bug in Dragonfly. Um, now the Dom is pointing to the Dom navigation page, and when I switch tab it doesn't switch, so you have to close it and reopen it, but now we've got the uh, the right window. Okay, so I can do uh, $A and I've got this object. I can click on it and over here I've got each of the elements and it's a similar kind of view that we saw in uh, Chrome uh, and WebKit. So we can scroll down and we can see uh, things like the hash. Yeah. So we're inspecting the particular object that we just clicked on. We can do dot length. I could do a dot click. I can actually um, run some code from here. Alert, yay. So if I click on this link down here, I get the alert box and then it'll continue with the normal action. So um, to see the network, uh, uh, request is just this network tab and we can see the individual um, request that it made. I can click on that. I can see uh, I don't want the headers. I see the contents. I can't see the contents. Okay. Um, but the point is, you can you can actually uh, debug some code in here. Not the best demo of uh, Dragonfly. I'm sure the guys at Opera will be able to demo it better than I can. Um, but at least you know where to go to actually start uh, testing your your JavaScript. And equally here, we should be able to um, use the um, uh, the jQuery bookmarklet. I'm not quite sure where we can drag it to. Um, do we have a? Uh, I'm sure there's a way of getting bookmarks into a bookmarklet 
so you can just click on it. If not, you just add it as a bookmark up here, um, click on it and it'll inject jQuery into the page and we can actually debug it. So, one more browser to go, last one. So, I have Windows 7 running uh, IE8 for you. So, uh, just waiting for it to start back up again. And um, I, I can't remember if I pre-installed the developer tools for IE8 or not. Um, but I'll show you where to go if you need to install those. I can't remember if it ships with it by default. The IE9 preview that I'm looking at already um, does have the debug, uh, developer tools built in. So you can go ahead and just straight away open them up. So uh, lovely black screen here. And there we go, we've got IE. Okay, so feels kind of weird to run IE on my... Uh, on my Mac, or it feels a bit weird to run Windows on my Mac. Um, I'm just going to test uh, whether or not we have our demo.com test. Uh, was it Domdation? Okay, um, just going to re enable the, uh, uh, just show you how, uh, I'm just going to access the Domdation.html page. Okay, so um, I have just uploaded. Uh, the DOM HTML page to one of my, my servers um, so I can get to it from ram.in slash DOM. I'll upload this DOM.html page to jQuery for designer so you can actually see it. Um, right, so uh, start off with we have a JavaScript error, so let's have a look at JavaScript errors. Um, object expected. So this is kind of classic IE, doesn't really tell you. Um, what's wrong. So let's try opening the developer toolbar. So developer tools. Let's maximize that bad boy. And script. If we maybe, I don't know. Start debugging. Yes. Okay. So when I hit start debugging, it reloads the page and re-executes it, it says there's a JavaScript error. And the reason for this is that uh, it hasn't found jQuery 1.4.2 um, because I didn't upload it as well. So I'm just gonna quickly fix that and come back to you. So uh, that should be uh, there now. So let's just um, try and rerun that uh, now. Oh, yeah, okay. Right, let's just refresh that. And we shouldn't have a JavaScript error. No, we don't. Uh, obviously, I should be pointing to the Google hosted version. That wouldn't have caused me any problems. Um, so this is the, the web page. Uh, F12, nope. Uh, F12 opens the, oh crap, uh, the developer uh, um, tools, which is now closing. Uh, obviously on a Mac, uh, F12 does all kinds of funky stuff, so uh, on a PC, it actually does it. Um, so let's, uh, the, the, so, sorry, the script debugger here, this is um, uh, JavaScript error, I think this is leftover JavaScript error, so I'm just gonna close this, start again, developer tools, um, And how do we clear this? Right click, clear console. Okay. Right, okay, so down here is the single line debugger. So I can do $.fn.jQuery and I get a version number. I've got multi-line, so I can do actual functions. Uh, foo, oops, alert, yay. Run script. That didn't do anything. Oh, yeah, it did. Sorry, I've got no sound on this. I guess that might be causing the problem. Um, 
Uh, we've got the DOM tree, so let me just bring us back up again. Sorry, I'm kind of bouncing from uh, uh, views. I'm not completely used to using uh, Windows that often. Um, but we've got the uh, the uh, the actual DOM nodes. Let me see if that actually highlights. Yep, so you can see that it's highlighting it. Let's see if we can actually log out um, a... Let's run that script, see what we get. That's... Um, not that useful. Um, let's try dot first. So curly bracket dot 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 means object. Uh, not great, <laughs> to be fair. Um, but it's a starting point. You know, it's it's a little bit. It's better than what we used to have. Um, from here, we should be able to look at the attributes of the DOM node. Um, layout, attributes, trace styles, not what I'm looking for. Uh, let's see if we can find that href. We can inspect the same way as we can um, using this, this cursor. Let's find the talks. Sorry, this is going a little bit, uh, a little bit awry. There we go. So that just has href. Um, it does actually have. These are showing me uh, content attributes rather than DOM attributes. Um, ah, here we go. So check the show read-only properties. Hash. There we've got the hash that we were looking at before. Um, so I guess we could do. Um, oh, we can find the elements with a hash. Is that going to work? Dot length. Equals. Um, right. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> this is the the debugger for uh, IE. Obviously, you're going to want to play with it uh, more than I've played with it. Um, and at least there's a script debugger, at least you can actually run some code, um, do things like a dot click function um, alert yay, and then run a script. Let's get rid of that one, uh, make this big again, um, get pictures, yay, and should be able to do an Ajax. Uh, there's no Ajax request responder because I haven't uploaded those files as well. But you can see that the tools are uh, getting there. This is IE9 Preview 3, uh, which annoyingly doesn't actually have um, a URL bar, so you actually have to type them in manually. Um, rem.im slash dom.html. Um, IE9 is pretty good, actually. Um, we've got the developer tools, pretty much exactly what we've just looked at. Uh, oh, we've got a whole dedicated uh, console there. Oh, look at that. Blimey, O'Reilly. Actually, I hadn't played with this yet. That's pretty cool. So uh, the console tab in IE9 goes in and actually uh, shows you the contents of, um, of that object. It hasn't shown me the individual elements we've selected, um, but it has shown me the length and has shown me some details about jQuery here. Um, you're probably not going to really want to get into that, but um, still, not too bad, not too shabby. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Alert, yay. Let's run that. Oops, run the script. So, let's put you over there. Get pictures, yay. Um, we've got the network. Uh, let's start capturing now. Let's go back to this one. Hit um, get pictures. Yay. And you can see here, this is the error that I was seeing. We've got a 404 here. So uh, the request failed to actually uh, do anything. Open detail view. Don't know what that is. But request body. Hmm, very good. Yeah, so... Actually, IE9's uh, developer um, debugger is pretty good. Um, I'm sure you guys are probably actually debugging IE7 
the, debug, the developer tools are very similar to IE8. In fact, uh, if you install the developer toolbar, uh, no, it's not the same, but it's similar-ish. Um, but IE9 looks promising. That's the uh, the good thing, I guess. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, there will be more screencasts coming. Um, hopefully this being a decent enough primer for you to actually get into the development tools that are available uh, in the different browsers. And if you have any questions or comments or um, other tools that you've seen or you find useful, uh, drop us a comment on jakerooperdesigners.com. And otherwise, uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.